Hey guys, just continuing to make just more videos about the uh, things that I keep getting asked about a lot. And this one's going to be about drive shafts. And actually, drive shafts are probably the most asked question I've gotten historically going all the way back to the beginning. Um, when I first started posting up this build, uh, I'd had it done for about six months, but I didn't post it until I'd had it on the road and on the trail for six months. And I only had like 20 followers on Instagram and I had people DMing me, asking me about drive shaft and asking me, what drive shaft did you use? And, and how, what did you do about the transfer case? You already know on that video I posted a few weeks back here, um, that you don't have to change out the, uh, transfer case, the electric shift transfer case on these GMT 800s. And in fact, you don't even, you know, really have to take the transfer case out of the vehicle. You can actually just leave it in untouched. What you do have to do is use one of these, okay? This is an adapter that slides in where the front drive shaft uh, slip joint on the factory uh, drive shaft slipped in. So it slides into the transfer case that far. That transfer case has a female slip spline on the output shaft that's that deep. And that slides in there. So this right here, um, obviously this yoke is held on by a nut. It slips onto its own spline. And this is just a standard 1310 double carton, or some call it a CV. I call it a double carton. You'll occasionally hear me call it a CV, but double carton yoke. And that's what you see here. See, that goes there. Okay. So I started carrying these and including these in the Tahoe Overlanding Fabrication Builders Parts Bundle because these were getting harder and harder to find for people on their own. So I started buying them in quantities so that I can sell them with my parts bundle. So what this was originally used for was when you did, uh, you know, large lift on an independent front suspension Chevy um, and you had to drop the front differential down, um, to do a drop uh, spindle, you then had to have a CV style joint like that one on the front drive shaft. And this was what you would use in order to accomplish that. This piece would just slide in and just never move because the front uh, differential never cycles up and down with an independent front suspension vehicle. But with ours, you actually need to slip this in and around this collar here, you need to actually weld it. Uh, just tack welds, no major welds. And in doing that, um, it prevents vibrations, because if you don't weld it, it vibrates a little bit because it just moves ever so much. So you need to weld that to the output shaft of your uh, transfer case, which then just leaves this much sticking out like a standard, uh, like NP, you know, 241C transfer case has. Uh, so basically it's converting your electric shift transfer case to a standard style output by using this. Now, a lot of people have concerns about you know welding that on they're worried that they may not be able to change out the output shaft seal if necessary and some people are concerned about that so what i've got here is an output shaft seal for the uh, electric shift transfer case on the front drive shaft i've got this shaft here and if you look I and mean, look at this i mean it's it's a difference of a quarter of an inch or more so, I mean, your welds can be actually fairly big and still not interfere with changing out this seal. But you want to make sure your welds aren't too big and clunky. But if they are, you could go in there with a sanding disc and knock them down if you ever had to change the seal. But, I mean, look at that. That's tons of room. And obviously, this drive shaft here is a good example of a drive shaft. To, you could use. So this is actually the drive shaft out of a Jeep, a Jeep TJ specifically. And it's a good candidate for us because it's actually longer than we need. So you can go get one of these, like I did here. Um, this one's in good condition. And you can then have it shortened. So like I said, this front drive shaft is out of a Jeep TJ. What is that, a 1997 to 2006 Jeep Wrangler? And they're long. I mean, um, just rough measurements. U joint to U joint, it's 38 and a half inches long. And we only need something closer to 27 and 5 eighths. I think that's what my last one measures out at. So this is a good candidate if you find one in good shape, then you can have a drive shaft shop. You can just walk in 
and tell them the length you need and they can actually shorten it for you. Fairly inexpensive as well. Uh, what we found other people have been using, I've not personally done it, but my other customers have used the front drive shaft from a 2000 Dodge Durango. So uh, that seems to be working for people. Now, when it comes down to the drive shaft, I actually didn't do a lot of videos about it back when I was filming because to me, as someone who's been in the off-road industry for 20 years, it seemed like such a, you know, mundane thing, kind of an afterthought because drive shafts are the most simple part of the build. But for a lot of people, I feel like it's the most intimidating part of a build. Just based off the comments and questions I get. And it always kind of baffled me because drive shaft is the simplest part. So what I usually do is do the build basically to the end and then figure out what your drive shaft needs to be and then go get it. <laughs> so um, what you'll do is you'll do the build and have it basically done. Like the final thing will be drive shaft. And as you do that, uh, you can then take your springs out. Coil springs really easy like that. And you can cycle your suspension all the way up and measure from the center of your yoke to your center of your yoke. Measure it, you know, go down about halfway, measure it, go all the way down, measure it, and write all those measurements down. So you have an idea of what your, you know, what your drive shaft length change is as the suspension cycles. Now, um, when you have, you know, radius arms like we've got, and you have the geometry as close to perfect as possible, the distance between the yoke at the pinion and the output shaft yoke of the transfer case will actually not be too much different all the way through the suspension cycle. In fact, in truly perfect uh, geometry, it would in theory not change at all. So for example, on uh, the blue Tahoe overlanding axis swap Tahoe, it varies about half an inch. Uh, you see that mentioned and depicted here. And half an inch is great. So on drive shafts like this one, like this Jeep, you may notice, I mean, it only compresses an inch and a half total. Because Jeeps came with link suspensions up front to begin with. And basically, in a properly set up front suspension, your drive shaft length doesn't vary all that much. I remember back when I first got into the industry, and you know, you were getting drive shafts made that were you had to use these special extra long splines for the slip joint on the drive shaft because of if you had a lot of travel, you had to have all this travel of the slip joint on your spline. But that's because it was leaf springs. And leaf springs cause all kinds of drive shaft variations. So that is why, you know, Jeeps don't have a very you know, large slip spline here, which is good. That's, that's less wear, that's less potential for failure. It's far less expensive. I remember how much money it cost when I had drive shafts made to have that extra long spline put into a drive shaft when I was having one built versus what, you know, something like this would cost. So this is definitely beneficial. Now, you have two ways of, of doing this. Once you've got those measurements I was talking about, cycling the suspension and measuring it, you've got your shortest length and your maximum length. So you can figure out what your shortest and maximum length is going to be. And whatever you do, uh, whenever you have a drive shaft made, you want to make sure that the drive shaft at its fully compressed length is at least three quarters of an inch shorter than your shortest length. And the reason for that is, is that you've got to be able to slip it. Like you see this here, it's got to be able to compress enough to get it up out of the yokes to take the drive shaft in and out. So whatever you do, make sure you have at least that much. Otherwise, you'll never get the drive shaft out. Um, even if you got you know just enough, you're going to have to pry, unbolt suspension links and things. Uh, what was a pretty common thing on the Fords, like the Ford TTB vehicles, is sometimes... Uh, you would have to unbolt the radius arms from the bushings so you could swing the axle forward to get the, you know, the drive shaft out um, for guys that would do axle changes. It was, it was a huge pain, so you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you have enough length, um, enough compression, so that you can get it out of the yoke and then pull the drive shaft out of the other yoke. So just keep that in mind. And you want to also make sure that you have at least enough extension to go just a little past what your extended length is. Um, and then once you've done that... You know, you can either take a drive shaft like this and have it shortened. Uh, you could, in theory, have one lengthened. Um, if it was too short, you could actually get a drive shaft that was the right style. You know, 1310 double carden, 1310 U-joint, and just have it lengthened if you wanted. Drive shaft shops are capable of doing that. Or you could do what I usually do. Um, 
I just walk into the drive shaft shop and say, these are my measurements, build me a drive shaft. The only reason I even have this shaft and the one that's uh, in my uh, other Tahoe was that I found them both for sale together um, from a guy who had just had them built for a Jeep TJ. And then he ended up doing some massive drive shaft stretch and, you know, rework. And so he got new drive shafts made. And so these were just sitting in his house and I got both shafts for like a hundred bucks. So at that point I was like, yeah, I'll just go with you shafts. And this has always been my spare. And my other Tahoe has been on the trail for getting close to three years now, still haven't had a drive shaft failure. So you know what? It's still sitting here unused. But point is, is that with the right measurements, which is basically how short you need it to, you know, be short enough to get out of the yoke and install it when you go to put it in and how long you need it to be just a hair past your fully extended length and your U-joint measurements and style. So 1310 U-joint, 1310 double carbon at the transfer case end, boom, you're done. Tell that to a drive shaft shop. They can build you one if you want a brand new one. Uh, there are drive shaft shops all over the place at all cities because drive lines are a really common problem, especially on vehicles like semi trucks. They drive thousands and millions of miles a year and any drive line service. So you'll find that there's drive line shops not far from you, no matter where you are, because semis just need it. So, um, or you can use some of the say trendy online guys like Tom Woods uh, or Adams Drive Shaft. You can use you know some of those guys. They can build you a shaft as you need as well. Um, so, I mean, if you want one built, that's what you do. Or if you want to find a used one, uh, we, like I said, the good starting point is the 2000 Dodge Durango. Um, but you could also search, there's going to be lots of different vehicles that might have a drive shaft that's compatible. I mean, we haven't measured every used drive shaft out there. So, you know, you may want to just kind of hunt around a little bit if you want. It's up to you. Um, don't, don't fret it too much. Cause like I said, if you can't find a drive shaft, just walk into a driveline shop and say, build me one. They'll build you one, they'll call you up, say it's done, and then you'll just put it in your truck and be done. So, you know, that's really up to you um, on how you want to go about it. But it has definitely been the biggest concern overall that people have had. And I mean far and away the biggest. Um, because I think drive shafts are just sort of something that people are scared of because they don't know how easy it is. They've just not really dealt with it. So if I were you, do your swap. Get it done. And then go find a drive shaft because a drive shaft is the easiest part. You can, like I said, you can have it made to any length you need. So, you know, don't let that hang you up. Go get everything else done and then you can get a drive shaft under it. And that'll be cake. And worst case scenario, you can find a Jeep front drive shaft like this one and just have it shortened. Uh, they usually charge, at least for me, uh, I mean, I've had a good relationship with drive shaft shop for working with them for so long, but... Um, they should charge me about 60 bucks to shorten and balance a drive shaft. And so that's not bad. You know, I mean, that's uh, pretty good. And you're going to want to have it balanced. Uh, as I mentioned in this video here, Chevy's often spin the front drive shaft from the transfer case end because the electric shift transfer cases kind of hang up the front drive in the transfer case. So you will still have front drive shaft spinning on the freeway. Uh, you want it vibration free. So you want to go ahead and have it balanced. Um, that'll make it a lot, a lot better for you. Um, but you know, that's, that's again, they usually only charge like, was it like 30 or 40 for the, for the shorten and like, you know, 20 or 30 for the, for the balance. So not too expensive. Thanks for watching.